Who's excited to be here this afternoon? Who wants to make a little bit more money? Okay, this side of the room is making enough then. Is that correct? <laughs> this afternoon, I want you to go on a journey with me. We're going to talk a little bit about real estate because, number one, that's the lane I play in. I'm a real estate investor. I've been one since 1999. I'm also a commercial realtor. I do all sorts of in real estate. I'm a real estate geek without question. By show of hands, just so I can see who I'm talking to today, who has ever bought a piece of real estate to flip and make some money on? Anyone? Who in the room has ever had a rental property? More than five? More than 10? I'll well, stop there for now. We're gonna take a surface level look into real estate today because through our weekends workshops and courses and coaching, we'll get into the weeds, the actual minutia of how to do some deals. But first, step back in time with me. As you guys have heard before, I am a former, I'm a retired firefighter paramedic. I did that for a decade. Firefighter, paramedic, tactical SWAT medic. I've done a lot of very interesting things in my life. Great career. As a matter of fact, best job in the world, bar none. Physically, if I could do that again today, I would do it and not even take a check for it. I loved that job. But in 1998, character building moment arrived. I was driving southbound on University Drive. I had a car to the right of me and a car to the left of me. And I was right sandwiched in between. There was no place for me to go. At that same moment, the guy coming in the northbound lane decided to make a left-hand turn right in front of us when we were 20 feet off the intersection. Our cars collided. My car spun around the intersection. And as soon as I came to a stop, I opened the door. I literally fell onto the ground. I looked up and I said, I still have the green light. This isn't my fault, and I knew it. Let me tell you about the other driver. The other driver was an 84-year-old gentleman with glaucoma, with four prior car accidents on his record that he had caused. And by the decision he made that day to not put on his seatbelt, tragically, he did not survive the accident. It was that serious. Now, as a firefighter, I made a decision a long time ago to trade my life to save someone that I didn't even know. So you can imagine how heavy that might rest on your head for a good period of time. But then there's reality. This happened. I knew at that point in time working for another department wasn't going to happen. I know how governments work. Accident, fatality, not looking good. They're not going to hire you, and I get it. My income came to zero. <laughs> Much like my car, I came to a screeching halt. My fire science technology degree, how much use is there for that in the business world? Not an awful lot. <laughs> Just not there. So my income came to zero. And what I didn't have is what I like to call second due income. When the first one goes away, what's there to replace it? Because if you rely on just one income, you're setting yourself up for problems and failure, potentially. Significant failure. I got a job with banking because that makes a lot of sense. I'm a fireman. I know a lot about what? Money. Banking? <laughs> the first day of my job at Bank of America, biggest bank in the country at the time, I walk up to the branch, introduce myself to the manager. Hi, I'm Peter. And she says, great, over here is where we keep the debits and over here is where we keep the credits. My comment was, excellent. <laughs> what are those? <laughs> I had no idea. But through my job with Bank of America, I was doing mortgages. I learned how to write mortgages. I met a lot of real estate investors, and I saw their accounts. So the guys with t-shirts and shorts that had a bunch of money versus the guys in $5,000 suits that had nothing. I saw the reality of who had the, the money or not. They got me into real estate investing. So walk with me through my first deal. My very first deal, my partner Dave and I, we bought a two-bedroom, one-bath condominium in Margate, Florida, across the street from the hospital, for $38,000. Obviously, that wasn't this year. $38,000. We went in there, we put some lipstick on a pig, we put some paint around, new carpeting, freshened up the appliances. You know what? We sold that thing for just under 70,000 bucks. My partner, David, and I, we made $18,000 in one stupid little deal in less than 60 days. 
My salary at the bank was 30 grand a year. I just added an extra almost 10 grand to it. I can tell you guys, at that moment, I was hooked on real estate investing. <laughs> Believe me, an extra 10 grand will help you do that. Now, you heard me tell you about the deal, and you didn't hear me talk about having a coach. Well, I didn't have a coach. The number one reason I did my first deal without a coach, quite frankly, is because I'm a stubborn Irishman, and I needed to know I could do it on my own with no one else's help. That was the reason. Nothing more than that. But before we did the deal, my partner Dave and I had made two decisions. Upon the closure of this deal, we're going to do two things. One, we're going to spend $200 on a financial literacy board game that was designed by a national speaker and author. Great game, by the way. And number two, we're going to pay the couple thousand dollars it cost to get a real estate coach. We go to my real estate coaching session on that day one. In the first 30 minutes, I learned we left about $10,000 on the table from a deal we just did. 10 grand would have more than paid for the coaching. Throughout the rest of that day, I learned a lot of new techniques and things that I could use for other deals. So my very next deal, I used a $100 bill only, no more money out of my pocket, and in 13 months, that deal had yielded us $56,000 in profit. Anyone got 100 bucks I can borrow? <laughs> our next deal after that, and our next deal, our three deals I did in 90 days, I made $83,000 in profit in 90 days. 83 grand, 30,000 at the bank. Bye bye. <laughs> the bank was gone. I know where it still is, I don't need it anymore. As a matter of fact, the first time I deposited that $10,000 check into my ATM account, my whole account got locked out. It's like, you don't deposit $10,000 checks. You make $800 every two weeks. Locked out my whole account. <laughs> Problem. Nowadays, I put the check in. It clears immediately. I love it. It's a great thing. Why am I even telling you all of this stuff? I'm telling you because my question for you is, what is your why? What will possess you to do the activities, to learn the techniques, to pay for the coaching, to do all the things you need to create that second due income? so that your loved ones are taken care of if one income goes away. I can tell you statistics all day long, but most people buy houses based on two incomes. If one goes away, they're a foreclosure case waiting to happen, unless they have second due income. Your average millionaire has seven to eight different streams of income. If you're relying on one, you're setting yourself up for a bad time. Part of my why was my wife and I at the time, well, she was my girlfriend at the time, we got married, and then we had children. And we had decided, because she had a, ch a child from a previous marriage, and she had to work the whole time. Kid was in daycare, all that kind of stuff. We did not want our children going to daycare with somebody else, instilling, some $5 an hour employee instilling their values on our kids. It was important that one of us be home, either her or I, and I was okay being home. If I stay home dad, I'd take it all day long. But she wanted to do that because she didn't get to do it before. She decided to become a stay-at-home mom. And she sat in that role for 10 years without having to work. Now, luckily, my real estate career gives me a lot of flexibility. So I didn't miss awards and things, the kids' clubs and all that kind of fun stuff. So we had, I think, what we call the best of both worlds. That was what our, was important for us. Many of you out there have seen my children. You'll see them at different events that I'm at. They've been with me since they were like five years old, working in the back of the room, working on real estate deals. They actually work in my business. My 13-year-old knows how to work the MLS system better than most realtor, realtors know how to work it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> He's available for coaching if you need that. <laughs> also, what did real estate lead me to do? It's led to me to be able to work with charitable organizations across the country. I've been a fundraiser for the American Red Cross, for the National Law Enforcement Memorial Fund out of Washington, D.C., and I have had the joyful pleasure of raising millions of dollars to help other people. So I may not be a fireman anymore, helping people like I wanted to, five or ten at a time, but now through the ability to raise money and capital on my schedule, I have the ability to influence hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people. What is your why? Why would you take this? I can't give you that answer. That's all on you. What is your why is my question for the day. You guys have been a great audience. I'll see you at the top. And remember, when you have superior knowledge, 
you're entitled to superior profits. Peter Palmer said that.